such an idiot. I am such an idiot. I am such an idiot. Uh, I am such an idiot. I am such an idiot. I'm an idiot. Why? I'm such an idiot. I should have just moved this guy down one and destroyed it. Why am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know, but I'm glad you did it. <laughs> or didn't do it. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am such an idiot. So... I am such an idiot. So, uh, what ended up happening was Abercrombie moved on to uh, Ohio Forks and had a long strung out unmanned supply chain. Like, I even came in here last time and I said, I'm going to attack the supply chain. And it's looking dicey. Uh, I'm going to have to cut her supply lines off so she can't roll on the siege table. And, and when I had the opportunity to do it, I sent an Indian to raid a stockade rather than just move one of my marine detachments to take the stockade away and gain a point. And I stupidly decided to raid. So dumb. And I failed the... Not only did I fail the raid, the Indian died trying to raid that stockade. Abercrombie was kept in supply, and then he was able to successfully um, siege and just annihilate uh, Ohio Forks, which means he took it and killed my leader and the forces that were in there. So... Uh, I am an idiot. Uh, so stupid. Um, I should have just taken the stockade and he would have been out of supply and not been able to roll on the siege table. But now I've gotten myself into like a huge problem where, um, she has two of the four spots she needs to win if the game ends or after the game ends after this hand of cards. So unless I can take, uh, either Niagara or Ohio Forks, she's going to win. So, um, thankfully, well, I have a handful of one operations points, which is not really going to help me. However, um, I do have this still. I held it over from the last turn. I didn't use it. So I'm going to try and spring it towards the end of the turn, um, on Niagara because Abercrombie is, or, um, her general that's at Niagara right now is all by himself. No support. Can't really go anywhere. She chose not to intercept with him when I moved Levy in from Quebec. Um, and he's got a pretty beefy straight, uh, stack of units with him. He's got, I think, 15 um, attack points because I was able to uh, reinforce with that um, French regulars card I had last round. So French regulars. Oh, you got one. That's exciting. So if I can wait until that's the final move of the turn and snag it real quick at the end, I think I'm going to be able to win this. So um, we'll see. Not looking, not certain, but I think I've got it if I play my cards right, literally. Okay, so Ludon, he did it. He took Ohio Forks. Oh, no! 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 <laughs> Which is awesome because that's my part of my victory conditions. It's uh, to get two. It's either like um, take two of the following four, which is Niagara, which I have, Ohio Forks, which I have, or Montreal or Quebec, and I haven't even like touched that side of the board because it's just it wasn't gonna happen. Um, so I just really need to hang on, kind of. I need to hang on to those, and then also have all of my original fortresses. So something tells me that he is going to go after one of my fortresses. Um, so I actually didn't really draw a very good hand this last, it's my last hand and I got all these one ops cards. Um, I did get um, an amphibious landing card, but I don't know that it's going to be worth it for me to try and attack there, so I'll probably just use that for ops. Um, one good one that I have though is Bastion's Repair. So if he does come after me and um, manages to roll well and get a fortress or try to get a fortress from me um, or besiege it, then I can play this and it kind of like makes him take longer to do it. Um, the other ones I have are um, Ambush, so if he does come after me I can play that and then I get to like double my roll and like apply step losses to his people first before we actually battle, so that's really handy for me to have in my hand. Um, another thing I could do is, oh, I have um, a campaign card so I can't activate two of my leaders which might come in handy but I'm gonna hang on to that as long as possible. Um, I do have this courier intercepted card, which is what he played the very first hand to get my massacre card out of my hand. Um, 
I don't know if I want to play it though, because if you play it, you have to roll, and only on a three to six do you get a card from him, because I kind of want to like get his hand empty as quickly as I po as possibly can. Um, that could be one way to do it, because I have my victory conditions, so as long as I hang on, I'm good. Um, but I don't know, I might need the three ops, so we'll see. Um, so I have the Bastion's Repair, that could be good. Um, the Ambush card might come in handy. Um, I have these two call out malicious cards, which I don't really need, but I might use for ops. Um, oh, and I also have um, this one, which makes him randomly discard a card, so I'll probably play that pretty early on just to like limit his options. Um, that's about it. The whole, oh, the whole um, raised provincial regiments. I can't play that because the uh, the assemblies are reluctant. So that's like really like screwed me this entire game. But um, so far so good. Just need to hang on. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, these games are always so close. So oh, I just want to win one. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's it. So wish me luck. This could be very bad. I know. This could be I so know. bad. I'm so excited. I hope I draw this, this card. This could be so bad. <laughs> this, this could be so bad. Or it could be just completely harmless. It could be, but it could also be so bad. <laughs> oh my god, this could be the worst thing. This could win you the game right here. One, I'm, I have victory conditions met, so I'm just hanging on, you know? I know, but like, seal it. I know. Courier intercepted on a roll of six, but I have to roll a three. No, six. no, and I'm notorious no. for rolling badly. No, <laughs> but I'm notorious for rolling badly. Like, you really need me to roll. How did you have that and that card in your one hand? Fucking crap, that's what I was talking about. In there. Oh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh so hard when you see what I was talking about. Okay, just roll. Oh. No. Oh. Whatever, whatever. Why? You're a bad thing that happened. It's like he intercepted a message that was like, we're out of milk. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> oh, that was such a gamble. <laughs> and I was talking in there about how I don't know if I want to use that for ops because I roll terribly and I'm known for rolling terribly and so it could just do nothing for me. No. <laughs> so as long if I can roll a four or higher, oh, I will no. win. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Three step losses. Why? <laughs> so do you take it back? I do. That's so frustrating. I do, and it kills Abercrombie. And He's his, dead? yeah, and his and his soldiers. I want to cry. I was so close. This isn't fair. So we are a couple of meeple, and uh, we hope you One enjoyed. One of us is a depressed meeple. <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed watching this uh, wilderness war session report uh, confessional experiment yeah. that we decided to put together, and we hope that the story of the game told was entertaining because um, it was pretty epic. Yeah. Pretty epic. Um, we just thought we'd give some final thoughts together as opposed to a part. Um, right. I, because the whole time, so whenever one of us was in the confession room or the confessional room, the other person had a noise canceling headphones on, so we never knew what the other person was strategizing. But um, apparently it played out pretty well where we were each having different cards that we planned to use one way and had to use it a different way or it was taken from our hands. So I'm uh, really interested to see like the final cut of it. Um, one of the things I said first when we first started was, uh, the very first uh, sit-down, was 
I'm going to be, I, I'm expecting you to um, employ a strategy that I haven't seen before. Be really? Because the last couple of times we played, and what I said was I expected you to try and take Louis Bird really early. Like, I expected you to try and storm, because usually you save that for the end. Yeah. Um, and so I was kind of expecting you to, like, pull something that I've never seen before. Yeah. Now, you didn't go for Louis Berg, obviously, and yeah. actually Louis Berg never ended up coming into play, so yeah. that uh, was fine. But yeah. you moved Abercrombie and Ludon yeah. in a, a, way off into the west, like, towards Ohio, yeah. towards Niagara, and towards the Ohio, um, Ohio, Ohio Forks. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I started to see them come up the river... Yeah. Uh, up up the river and towards out into the mountains towards Lake Erie. I was like, well, this is going to be a completely different game. Yeah. And for, and for the most part, the entire game took place out in sort of like the western U.S., uh, mm -hmm. western parts of Pennsylvania and Ohio and stuff like that. I don't think I moved any of these, some of these leaders, I didn't move them at all. Um, Which surprised me greatly, yeah. I should say. Well, I, I kept expecting you to bring yeah. the hammer down because yeah. you had so many forces here, and you never did. Yeah. Well, the thing with taking Louisburg is I have to have that amphibious mm -hmm. um, that landing card, um, and I didn't have that in my opening hand, because uh, you're right, your instincts were correct, I was going to try and do that quickly, but um, <laughs> I didn't have the card to do it, and then you actually discarded a couple of them mm -hmm. and so I was like well maybe I shouldn't even like try for Louisburg and just like go for um, some easier targets at least in the beginning I was thinking about going for Louisburg later but the problem is is it like and I talk about this some um, in like my like confessional is that like it's so hard to do card management as a British player because you need the three ops cards for a lot of your leaders like um, Luton and yeah, Abercrombie. You killed Abercrombie. I, don't know I he's did. He's there. right here. Poor guy. Um, so, but then some of the three ops cards are like so really great events, and so it's like balancing those two. Um, so I, I kind of felt like I needed to just concentrate my efforts on on good places. Also, I knew I needed to take either Niagara or Ohio, Ohio Forks. Forks, and I already had a lot of stockades and fortresses at the beginning of the game, so that was less like time for me to build up things so that's why it like looks like this now. i was i was i have to say i was really impressed with your supply line the, yeah. the geographically the way you built all your stockades up up uh the country like you put them you left them pretty much unmanned and pretty vulnerable i did yeah. but i had no manpower on this yeah. in this part of the board yeah. in order to take them back to, except near right. the end and the and way by then i'd already captured ex exactly ohio you had like a huge couple of huge forces running around ohio just decimating me yeah. and i couldn't respond without putting my guys in danger and i would much rather try and have them hang on in a siege yeah. which didn't work for me end up not working for me but i could not get to your stockade lines because mm -hmm. you built them on either side of mountains that would forced yep. me to use too many cards to get yep. there and take them so that was really smart and I didn't expect that at all and um I wish I could have taken advantage of the fact that they were unguarded a little better yeah um yeah. It, it was smart you did leave some provincials along the way yeah. but I mean hindsight's twenty twenty. but um there was like I think the couple hands before this last one um or the one where I took Ohio Forks I actually used a lot of three ops cards, but two of the three ops cards that I used would have gotten more leaders and more units on the board. Mm -hmm. But I used those three ops because I had Ludon or Ludon yeah. there, um, and I needed to move him, and I needed to put down stockades to be in supply in order to take Ohio Forks. And so that was one of the things I was struggling with in my confession, was that or the confession room or whatever beforehand, was like, do I just use these cards for the ops, or do I actually use them for the events and get more leaders on the board? And I thought... Well, if I only need two of the four, and it's, like, the second to last hand, I might as well just, like, go for it and, like, get it, and then I just hang on for the last hand. And I didn't you, hang on! I you almost so you almost did. It, 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 was, so it was scary. The fact that you had those two cards in the final hand that allowed you to steal from me, potentially, was that. scary. And, and the fact I that had, I had the surrender card. And I had the, um, the one that, like, Bastion's repaired. Which allowed you to reduce siege. Yeah, but... I was hoping, so even if you did get through the seed... Oh, and I had, like, the, yeah, um... The ambush. The ambush card. Yeah. So I was, like, in that room, I was, like, okay, like, I prepared for every scenario. Like, he's gonna come after me and try and take one of my, like, spots, or he's gonna, um, come after me at one of these. Niagara, yeah. Um, so I thought I had every scenario planned, but I did not plan for your die rolling to be as high as it was. I, it was pretty shitty. It, it came down to a die roll. I needed to roll high, and you needed to roll low, and I because exactly I had the disadvantage, happened. and that is yeah. exactly what happened. So so uh, heartbreaking. Yeah, I, I think there's yeah. Two, I think there's two things here that ended up ultimately contributing to me winning the game. 
Uh, and that was, you never push me back up the river here um, at no. Ticonderoga. You just cut. Well, because my guys cost three to activate. And I, I, I was know. using my threes to activate those, so. Yeah, that, yes. But I never had to worry about. Yeah. I never had to worry about anything going on here. I could yeah. confidently say, like, I don't think you're going to do this. I can kind of work on other things. And yeah. I was never forced to be pushed back up the river and potentially have to like, go back to Montreal. Yeah. And because you never tried to take Louisburg. What that allowed me to do was use Levis's forces, who he had a lot of guys with him here. from yeah. Quebec, and just sail him all the way over to take this back. Had yeah. there been any pressure, either up the river or from Louisbourg, I would yeah. not have been able to commit those troops but to taking it I, back. But had I, like, not... Like, had I used some of those cards to, to do that, I just didn't think I had enough, like... I didn't have enough to make that happen, to have, like, three fronts going. Like, I really... To, like, ensure that my dudes were going to get Ohio Forks and Niagara. I just like really went for it and focused on that. Yeah. So I thought you had it. When yeah. you when you ambushed me at Niagara, I yeah. thought the game was over because I, I didn't yeah. have a card to activate Livy again and play surrender. And you it, I know. you waste cuz I had a bad hand. I had of my nine cards, I think six of them were one ops or less, and Levy takes two ops to activate, so I, I only had one or two chances. Yeah. So it was it was crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, early game, um, I think the interesting card I played was smallpox. Mm -hmm. I gave you smallpox. It decimated Mon my Indians. Took out most of my Indians. Um... Because you had could, a bunch of people here. Yeah, and I could never get them back. You kept playing the Northern Indian Alliance cards, and I never was able to get them into my I hand. I drew a lot of those, and then early on I drew a lot of your French like troops cards, so you were not getting manpower, you weren't getting help from the Indians. Like, you also got militia in the southern section out, so I couldn't use my favored, my favored western route down to raid you. It was just, yeah. it, I could not pick up raid points whatsoever. Um, uh, it was well played. It was a well played game by thank you. Thank you. You too, as well. Um, I, I just... Man, it's like every hand, like, you want to maximize what you're given, and, like, it's so tough. Like, it's so tough, because, oh, mm. Heartbreaker. I know. God, I'm, mm, I really want to cry. Maybe I'll just have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We're going to try and do this uh, with some other games uh, in the future um, with this style yeah. of, of session reporting and, and kind of, like, giving you... Uh, access to the strategies you're both employing um, because I think you know the reason these types of games are fun these sort of um, war games and historical games are fun is because they tell a story and they tell a different right. story every time and the story of this of this game was the British player hang <laughs> trying to hang on uh, through the final French attack and not yeah. being able to whereas in other games we've had completely different stories so um, and every game tells its own story so we're going to try it again uh, very soon. Yeah, with a different so game. let us know what you think. Yeah, and sure. if you have any suggestions or um, things you want to let us know about the format or, or this particular game. Or if we took any stupid turns yeah, if, and if we've done something different. Strategy <laughs> advice, much appreciated always. Yeah, especially for me. <laughs> so, yeah. anyways. Thank you so much. Yeah.